Anyway, yes, here's an email that came from a fan in Italy. And his name is, well, yeah, I'll just say Sergei. Yeah, you can go ahead and tell his name. Uh, guy, and what he's, he's essentially, he's an atheist. He's one of our viewers. And I told him that uh, I was going to go ahead and address this today on the program. Uh, because I just, I, I thought, well, okay, I can just email him back. But no, this one's a really great one to sort of take down publicly, live, with blood. Uh, and pie afterwards. Uh, he is in a discussion or an argument with a professor. Okay, with a prof now, I, I, I'm astonished. At, I, mean, I, I wonder what kind of professor this man can be. Maybe theology. That's possible. Okay. Because if this man is a professor, I, I am astonished to, to contemplate just how someone this dumb can get a professorship in Italy. I mean, are the educational standards in that case? Italy has a wonderful intellectual cultural tradition. Uh, it, and it hurts me to think that uh, there are professors like this apparently out there uh, trying to undermine that. They also have the Holy uh, Roman well, Catholic Church. Well, yeah, but you know, so, so there's, I guess, yeah, maybe maybe this is a uh, you know professor of uh, Vatican nonsense, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, Sergei writes us and he tells us about this discussion he's having with this professor, and he says, um, you know, and I'm going to be meeting with this guy this week to talk some more about this stuff, and uh, just to uh, go through pretty quickly. Apparently, he pointed this professor towards this website, God is Imaginary, uh, with some, and uh, the, the professor responds to some of this, and he starts out by saying, and, and I'm just going to go through this bit by bit quickly to illustrate just where the apologetics fail is happening, okay, and the making stuff up and the equivocating everything. The professor starts out by saying, oh, I just got, I'm not going to do the accent, I just got done reading through a few of the God Imaginary proofs, and I have this to say. Uh, most of their proof is against a straw man, and then he goes on sort of pompously to explain what a straw man is. Okay, well, this is fundamentally the courtier's reply that uh, P.C. Uh, Myers came up with in response to the people attacking Dawkins right. for not having this sufficient understanding of you know, complex theology. It's always, you know, a, a skeptic or an atheist will criticize some aspect of Christian belief, and then the believer can just say, oh, well, you, you have a very shallow and uh, insipid understanding of these things, when in fact it's all extremely deep, and you're not really getting to the meat of it because you're ignorant yeah. and you haven't studied Which this Which I still say and is interesting, because without a God to mm -hmm. examine, how can you know more than someone else? Uh, well, that's a point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, here's the, I guess here's the example that was given. We're, you know, before we've talked about things like you know, problem of evil, like deliberate acts of evil, like child rape and crimes and things that involve free will. Well, what about natural things, tragedies like Earth. cancer. Here's the question that was raised. For instance, a professor responds, why doesn't God answer the prayer to cure cancer? They, I, you know, those pesky right. pain in the ass atheists, they argue that it doesn't work. Period. Trouble is, cancer is being cured day by day. It will be cured, now you, you guys are going to love this, you're going to love this. He says, it will be cured within a hundred, well first off he asserts that it will be cured within a hundred years for sure, more likely within twenty, Glad you're confident about that. Yeah, which are you, what, are you a professor of oncology now? Because he sounds really, probably not. But he says this, listen to this. This is the great part. God is answering the prayers of many righteous people who not only prayed, but backed up their prayers with money, research, dedication, and science. So this is the God, God helps those Wait. who help themselves argument. If you do it yourself and then you thank God. Well, if prayer needs to be backed up with money, research, dedication, and science, why waste time with the prayer part? Isn't it what, what role does prayer pay, uh, play in any of that? Doesn't Russell use the example of taking two aspirin and praying for your headache to go yeah. away? And the, oh, yeah, and the headache went away. That's exactly what this fellow is doing. Okay. So he's saying, yes, uh, God is answering prayers. Okay. It's, just, it's just people got to do stuff, and when they do stuff, but that's actually God answering the prayer. Yeah. A little odd, yes. And, but then you know, he goes on, and he, he mentions some... some stuff that's historically false, actually. He says, if you study the history of medicine and medical research, you'll find that most of it, most, much of it owes its present status to Christians, Christian universities, Christian hospitals, da-da-da-da-da, um, which is actually a pretty ahistorical. I mean, the history of medicine um, is yeah, pretty I mean, much We have St. James Hospital today. And I mean, transcultural? Well, actually, in the yeah. Middle Ages, right? Which is, uh, falls within the period that he's about to talk about here. The most... Uh, okay. Uh, gotcha. Well, he, um, in the Middle Ages, the most advanced medicine that was actually going on was coming from the Arab world, the Islamic world. Now, they, they were still wrong, right? Because they were working off Galenism, which came from Greece. And so it's all about the four humors and what have you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but this was a time when, you know, um, you was, so that was actually the most advanced medicine at that time. And then 
in different cultures, around, throughout all human cultures. You've had this or that or the other advance and someone going along to, to, to um, you know, fix some errors in our knowledge and, and what have you. But to claim that, again, it's mostly due to Christians, uh, that's just plain ahistorical. But again, what he says is these same Christians prayed greatly each time they invested in research, outreach, and care. So what, what did it? Was it the, he seems to think it's the prayer that did it, and the research, outreach, and care, the actual science that followed the prayer, yeah. was just had really no part. Or did it? I mean, which, what this press, uh, you think that this man being a professor would understand that what yeah. he's just made is a testable claim. Yeah. Okay? You know, we can do this. We can actually run an experiment. If he's saying that, is he implying that only research that is backed up by prayer ends up having positive results? Right. Or is, is he saying simply that, yes, prayer happens, but you've got to have human activity to back the prayer up to get those results, in which case, why do we need prayer at all? Correct. No, he, he goes back and forth, and he doesn't really you know, explain which of those two kind of conflicting positions he actually yeah. holds. Well, it's like the children's story with the stone suit. I won't right. go into it, but you can yeah. look it up online if you're not familiar. Stone but the, suit. But what he, again, what he doesn't get with the, the, when atheists ask these questions is, look, why can't prayer simply be sufficient in and of itself? You know, right. you, you are essentially talking about... Yeah. Well, here, I'll, I'll give a much better example. When he goes on, he, he, he goes on to say, prayer works, but sometimes very slowly. Okay. And then he goes on to claim that uh, you know, he, he's, he's annoyed with atheists because we all are, are we're actually asking, well, why doesn't, when, when, why doesn't God answer prayers? We're, we're asking, they're defining, when he says prayer doesn't work, they're defining doesn't work to mean doesn't work magically or doesn't work instantaneously. Sort of like it was described in the Bible. Well, he's, he says, <laughs> Jesus never said that. He said, neither do most Christians. He said you can move a mountain. Uh, yeah, that bit, right? The whole <laughs> Faith. grain of a mustard seed, right? Yeah. But the point is, uh, Mr. Professor, yes, in, po in, in fact, Christians do claim this. We get calls on this show, yeah. and we get emails from people claiming, yes, God answered my prayers, and they describe yeah. a miraculous yeah. instant event. Women who couldn't have children that were barren in the Old Testament, yeah. praying, ha giving, yes. giving birth so to they, children. But again, this, what are we doing here? It's called no true Scotsman now, yeah. this fallacy. Well, real Christians don't say that. Right. So look at what he gets to do. It's just, it, uh, imaginary beings are wonderful because you can just keep moving the goalposts and making stuff up to respond to criticisms. You know, Christians say, well, God can do this. Well, if God can do this, how come he doesn't do this, that, and the other thing? Well, I didn't really mean that God does this, right? What, what, what God really does is more like this. You see, you can just keep bouncing around. It's just sort of, you, you spin around and around in a rhetorical cul-de-sac mm -hmm. until you're all dizzy and you don't know where the, you know, the, the conversation began. But he says, prayer works, but sometimes it works very slowly. To God, the Bible says 1,000 years is as a day. Since the year 1010, just think how much has been cured. It's amazing. And in just one day of God's time. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome for God, but what about all the people that died in that thousand years? No, I'm just, I, in terms of like this sort of bogus argument, right? Look, yes, look at what he's bogus. able to do because he can just make this stuff up. So he can, so he can respond to atheist criticisms of why doesn't God just cure stuff instantaneously? Well, he says, well, God really does. It's just that instantaneously to God is a thousand years to us. So he really is answering prayers instantaneously. It is wild that this is coming out of it's Italy a, with, a, mm -hmm. with a history of miracle belief. Uh, right. Again, <laughs> yeah. But you can just sort of deny these things, right? You can just yeah. do this kind of, when you have an imaginary being that you are trying to defend, you defend him with these fantastic flights of imagination. Because, uh, but it's, it, this is just a, a, a hilarious example of this sort of thing, and I'm really, really stunned. So if, uh, if Sergei is, is watching this, and, or if he sees it later on on, on uh, Blip TV or something like this, just, just you tell your professor that I'm absolutely amazed that someone, if, if real, it, uh, actually tell him that this professor has my thanks, because we live in Texas, where the educational standards are known to be pretty abysmal, and they've just gotten worse. And um, to know that there is somewhere else other than Texas that, that a person this stupid can become a professor of anything kind of makes Texas look not so bad this week. So thanks for that, Professor. Um, but it really is just uh, uh, incredible. So in, uh, in other words, according to this professor, the results of prayer are indistinguishable from the results of hard work and human effort. <laughs> I would agree. Yeah, it's all the same. So <laughs> I think they are indistinguishable. So that's it. So that's just some of the apologetics fail that we get uh, in emails, and that some of our, our our viewers and listeners tell us that they hear. And um, uh, email us some more.